what's up so thought I'd show you guys my uh, early uh, Bronco uh, brake pedal conversion so actually I have a 1966 Bronco and in the 1966 Bronco, um, I think it was the only year they actually had that, the brake light, the, the rear brake lights were actuated by a pressure switch and not a this electrical switch right here. Like all the modern, I think, uh, Broncos after uh, 66 were controlled by this uh, brake lever switch. And uh, one of the issues I'm having is... Uh, I, I have a four disc. Uh, I did the four disc conversion and a, and a hydro boost uh, bracket and hydro boost, but it's just too powerful for this uh, pressure switch. Let me show you real quick. That is my. That's my. Uh, I forget the name of that thing. It's the uh, proportioning valve, and that little pressure switch right there keeps on failing, and like every month or two, maybe like every three months, it fails. And sometimes I've actually had it blow out and leak through this thing. So um, my goal is to replace that. This is the original style from the 66. Um, it just can't hang with this. So I'm going to convert the pedal to like an earlier uh, or like later model uh, Bronco with the with the switch here. You know, that's actually mounted on the on the brake pedal here. But uh, let me show you the brake pedal too, the original one. Yeah, but the original brake pedal was a little bit different. I don't know if you can see the light there, but it has a, a bolt that goes through it instead. And I tried to match it up, but it just doesn't seem to fit right. So, um, I mean, I didn't really want to buy a whole new freaking pedal, but, you know, uh, I had to do it. So, all right, so I'm going to get this, uh, this pedal off here and um, replace it. And hopefully I got to move that. I got to pull the wires back up. And uh, crimp some connectors on there and get it going. So, all right, cool. Oh yeah, I have the uh, hydro boost. If you wanted to see that, so in, in my other video, I have a, a picture of the hydro boost bracket. But, uh, yeah, I think just too powerful for that, uh, that little sensor. It just blows right, blows it out. So, right. the side by side comparison of the um, two original. Um, so the main thing I'm really concerned about is this area right here. Um, you can see that little light. I'm gonna change the camera angle here. Um, this right here, this was the original like bolt and screw that came on there. It went like that, but it didn't seem like it was enough room. It just didn't didn't fit right for some reason. So, um, gotta put that in there. Gotta got some new bushings to put in there. And uh, all right, get it going. This gave me on getting this freaking pin back through. The alignment is a freaking pain in the ass. Yeah, it's almost like it's not a line, but total bitch. All right, I just think I figured out what the deal was. See that little shaft right there? Well, it's keyed on one side. Uh, couldn't see that below, so yeah, I figured like, what the hell's going on? I can't get this damn shaft back through. So yeah, it's hard even with the key spot. So just let you if you're trying to do this. Uh, there's a the key there, so all right. I just couldn't see that, but the trick is, uh, this is a total bitch because this thing gets totally out of alignment. Yeah, this is a 66, so this thing has to be it's 50 years old, so. I had to remove those top bolts there to kind of give it a little bit of wiggle room so I could wiggle that shaft back in there. There's two bolts, one there and one there on each side of the steering column. So, yeah, this originally was a stick shift, so that's the, uh, that's where the clutch used to go right there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there was a clutch here and a brake here, so. Took the clutch pedal off, though, so. All right, cool. Got that thing in there, and uh, get that freaking uh, clip back in there. Put a new bushing in here, and here's the pin that I bought. It's like three dollar. I mean, I guess it wasn't really necessary, but it was like a three dollar pin. Yeah, pretty cool looking though. Pan of yellow. <laughs> All right, so this goes like that. It's hard to do this with holding the camera. So this goes over like that. And then I slide this in. Ah. All right, I'll come back. It's hard. It's possible to do this with a camera. So, uh, that's what it looks like in. And then I got to run the wires here. Hopefully this works. I might have to add some. This is an aftermarket shaft, so it feels a little bit loose there. See right there. This might not even work. Uh, 
Well, I guess I'll see. All right, cool. I think I have a problem with this, this uh, output shaft, this little shaft right here. This is not a stock shaft. It's uh, it's the one that came with the Hydroboost bracket. So as you can see, I push down on it. I don't I have my multimeter, my continuity tester connected here. And as you can see, it's not activating. So, but if I hold my finger down, I think this rod needs to be lengthened because it just seems loose on there. It should be tight. All right, I'm gonna see if I still have the stock uh, rod here and compare them. I guess the stock one wouldn't, wouldn't have it anyways because it wasn't ever designed to have that kind of shaft. So I might have to weld some material on that thing. Um, okay, we'll see. Yeah, I don't really want to fuck around with this because it breaks and. Uh, a few people have almost rear-ended me saying, hey, dude, your brake lights are out, man. <laughs> That's how I know my brake light switch is not working again when people complain. Plus, I'm, I'm going camping over the weekend. I'm going down some really long mountainous roads, man, like down Big Bear. So I don't want, you know, doing lots of braking. So um, I get this thing fixed. All right, cool. Guys, I do have an extra shaft somewhere because I know I've I done a couple different brake conversions over the years. I originally went from a single master cylinder uh, to a vacuum... Uh, booster you know conversion and uh, a couple other things in between I can't remember what I, what I did but I know I, had, I knew I had an extra bracket somewhere so I'm gonna try this and see if maybe the guy just didn't well this right or correct or it's thinner or something I'm, I'm gonna compare the two but I think they came from the same guy so just you know I think the guy he also he did hydro boost brackets and he also did uh, the vacuum boost bracket so All right cool I can definitely see a difference in the shafts here um, So, um, yeah, this one, this is the one I had on there. It has way less material there. Um, and this one is, is, is thicker to kind of create contact on that thing. So, I'm going to do a quick test and see what happens real quick. But, uh, yeah, originally I had to shorten this or lengthen it. You know, I had to thread it further down the rod. So, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, see, this is further down. Okay, cool. I'm going to mess with it. A balancing act. So this one is actually too much, so it just always stays on. Continuity. So, <laughs> like, this is kind of a pain in the ass. All right. All right. This is gonna actually be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, I was hoping this would be plug and play, but it's not really. Uh, like it never really is. <laughs> Sometimes it is. I don't know, but usually I have to freaking modify everything. Um, and that's what happens when you're not really dealing with a stock vehicle. So, um, yeah, the problem is, if it's too loose, then the switch is not going to come at the right time. If it's too tight, then your brake lights are going to be on it all the time. So it's, a, it's like a little balancing act of not too tight, not too loose. So, I can either grind down this one and shorten the shaft, or I can weld some more material on this one. So, um... All right, I'll figure it out. All right, cool. Bye. All right, guys, I uh, added some more material to this thing. And I'll start grinding it and shaping it. Try to get this thing actually perfect. We'll see. Shape, uh, it's still too big. You may, when I have it connected here, it automatically activates uh, the switch. So I'm going to keep on grinding this down right here along this edge until I get to where it's snug, but it's not activating the, the switch. All right, that's yeah, pretty close here. That's what I'm trying to get going here, is that when I barely move the pedal, it's going to go off. But it's, I mean, it's, I might have to make up more grinds, but just trying to get this so it doesn't, I don't want this thing to activate when I'm just sitting there, you know, so I need to, all right, I'm going to test it in the actual truck, see what happens. Right, my new multimeter here and uh, continuity mode now with the buzzer, I think I'm getting somewhere now. You can hear the buzzer going off there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because my pedals can be higher and it doesn't activate until I get down further. I don't actually have it connected to the actual brake booster yet, so. But it seems like that's what I would want.
keep on playing with it. Cool, at least I can get somewhere. Definitely not plug and play though. <laughs> Cool man, I think I got it, check it out. My multimeter right there, brake pedal. Barely touching it. As soon as I touch the pedal, light comes on. Yeah, so as soon as I touch my that pedal, boom. I mean, it's not perfect, I mean, do that. I, I just, that's a weird, wacko design, man. <laughs> it seems like a seriously unreliable design, I guess we'll see, but uh, I guess I like the idea of the pressure thing better, but dude, it just doesn't last. Maybe they make a better pressure regulator, but that's how they came stock. So, at least after 66. All right, now I gotta run the wires back up from the pressure uh, sensor down there up into the cabin here. Stoked. I'm gonna put a little grease on there. Just make sure to uh, don't get too much metal metal contact. Freaking awesome, dude. All right, cool. Okay, got the wires pulled back through and we put some uh, little ends on this thing and uh, just uh, warning, I guess, information, but uh, the brake lines are always hot. So there's always power to, to the brake lights. So just be, uh, make sure you don't hit that, ground that out. You're gonna be seeing sparks. All right, so almost done. Guys, there it is. Brake lights are on <coughs> and I have a, Thing wedged on it so not exactly plug and play um, I mean having the real one definitely made it easier um, and the brake pedal smaller which I kind of like I didn't really like that big one it was just too close to my gas pedal and it's custom gas pedal I did in our video but uh, all right cool I'm ready for camping uh, Memorial Day uh, 2016 so be up on Big Bear so if any Bronco people are up there I might see you uh, I'll be on like 3N16 and 3N13, going between uh, Green Valley Lake and uh, Holcomb Valley. So, cool. Maybe see you up there. All right, cool.